Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, uh, before I start, I would like to wish um, Selamat Raya to all of you. And today, um, I want to share to all of you about uh, my project. And um, my name is Nur Munira. I'm the coordinator of Shorebirds Peninsula Malaysia Project. Okay, good. Thank you, Yuan. Okay, uh, tonight I want to share about, um, I bring a topic on conserving the jewel of Penang. What is the jewel of Penang? Um, this is referring to TAT, or Telo Aitawa Kuala Muda. Okay, next slide. Okay, I divide uh, my presentation tonight into three parts. The first one, I will talk about some introduction on my project, uh, Shorebirds Peninsula Malaysia project. And second one, uh, I will sh share on our findings and progress. And last one, I will touch a little bit on the threats on Solo Aitawa Kuala Muda. Okay, next. Okay, before I go further, I just want to um, introduce uh, briefly on our team members. Uh, they are uh, uh, my backbone that always support me uh, to continue um, do this project. The first one is Muhammad Nasir Azizan. Okay, uh, second is Dr. Nurul Salmi, lecturer from USM. And the last one is... Uh, Aini Hassanah, uh, she is the PhD candidate um, in USM. Okay, next. Okay, I want to tell you uh, what is our vision, uh, what is the SPMP. This is the short form. When I say SPMP, I'm referring to Shorebirds Peninsula Malaysia Project. Okay. Um, my vision is to see Teluk Aitawa Kuala Muda to become as a protected area and become the first EAAFP, flyway site in Peninsula Malaysia. What is EAF? I will tell you later in my slide. So uh, there are two objectives in this project. The first one, of course, to do research. Uh, for, uh, for example, we conduct continuous monitoring data and second one, we do the outreach programs. Okay, next. Okay, uh, in this conservation lines, uh, we, we are glad to introduce to you our partners. Uh, we, we have Malaysian Nature, Nature Society, especially in Penang, really support us very, very much on this um, uh, uh, on our project. The second one, um, the Habitat Foundation, uh, they, uh, we receive conservation grant. Uh, but it, uh, basically, it is the first grant that we receive uh, for this project. Thank you very much to the Habitat Foundation. Uh, we also collaborate with EAFP, East Asian Australasian, Australasian Flyway Partnership, and we also uh, have um, collaboration with WeatherQuest is an international uh, organization and also USM. Okay, next. Okay, uh, this is, uh, I want to bring all of you to our nest. This is Telo Aitawa Kuala Muda Coast Penang. Okay, this uh, Telo Aitawa is located on the mainland of Penang, not in the Penang Island, it's the, in the mainland. If you can see uh, in the uh, small box, okay, small box show to you the location of Telo Aitawa, um, the, uh, the red box, yeah. And the second uh, picture, the last pic uh, the large picture uh, uh, is the ecological boundary of Telo Aitawa uh, Kuala Muda. Um, what I can share with you, uh, this area consists of 600, 600 hectares of 
uh, mangrove and also it flank with mud flats on the seaward side. Okay, if you can see uh, on the south of the mangrove area uh, is the Sungai Laha Andin. It starts with Sungai Laha Andin in the, in the south um, 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 boundary to up to the Kuala Muda. It stretches about 10 kilometers of mangrove area. And in between that, there are several river, river mouths, for example, Sungai Tembus and Sungai Penaga. And right now, if you can see on the um, top part, on the, on the north uh, of the area, there is a Pocaccia Pond uh, that is already existed there. Okay. Next. Okay. This is come to the map of the flyways. Okay. Like us, we use highway to move, right? So for birds, we they they are they are also ha have their own flyways. Okay. So Malaysia, okay, there are um, at least nine or eight, eight um flyways in Malaysia uh, in, in the world. So um Malaysia is located uh, on the East Asian Australas Australasian Flyway, which is um, in the red line, okay, at the center. So if you can look, look carefully to the map, you can see Malaysia, which I circle in the, uh, with the uh, black, black circle there, yeah? Okay, this is Malaysia. Malaysia is located on the East Asian Australasian Flyway. So every year, thousands of migratory shorebirds will migrate from North Hemisphere to Southern Hemisphere to avoid winter. They will come here to come food, uh, to, to, to seek food and shelter. Every year, uh, you can see them from September to um, uh, April, yeah, where they migrate um, along this way. Okay, they migrate two times. Okay, they, they will come here uh, to uh, on on their winter migration uh, to avoid a cold season. Yeah, in in the north, and they will go back to their breeding ground during the summer. Okay, so uh, at least fifty four shorebird species use these uh, flyways, and uh, Teluk Aitawa also receive uh, become become a um, chosen uh, uh, area but by, by by has been choose by the by the uh, shorebirds to come to our area to find the food uh, to find shelter and to find food okay before they migrate more southern uh, to southern area okay if you look at the um, pictures here this is the uh, um, view of mangrove during high tides, uh, whereas the water level is very high, cover all the mud flats, and uh, this is at Sungai Tembus, one of the good spots for shorebirds. If you want to see shorebirds, you can come to this area. Okay, so next slide. Okay, so um, uh, on top is the view of mud flats facing Komta. It's a Georgetown city. If you can uh, look uh, clearly from your screen, it is a Komta and uh, all the Georgetown city. So uh, what I want to tell you guys here, uh, not only, uh, yeah, when we talk about birds, birds um, uh, need mangrove, we also need mangrove. Of course, everyone need mangrove, okay. We all we always look at the river. We always yeah. look at Sakina, the mangrove. Can you go and take an effort to go and find your or no? Yeah. Hello. Okay. Okay. Um, if you look at this picture. We, we always see the mangrove, the um, uh, river, but sometimes we need to look more deeper. When we, you, you see, there is a mud flat, but 
everybody, I mean the human and the um, uh, birds also rely on the mud flats. Can you imagine or if, have you ever wondered what is inside the mud flat? What, what they are looking for on the mud flats? There's like nothing, right? But believe me, if you dig um, the, 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 the mud, you can see a lot of invertebrates, which is very, um, um, very important for the food, uh, for the birds, for their food, and also for us because we eat by what, right? We, we eat kerang. For if if you are um, in the northern region, you are familiar with mentarang. We you are familiar with kupang. With uh, with the uh, any other names of the biofa. Everybody needs mud flats. So this is the message. So whenever you think about about a uh, mangrove river, you must think underneath the mud flat also. Okay, next. Okay, okay. I I uh, I want to continue my presentation with this. Um, my background is uh, uh, um, my background in shorebirds uh, study is um, just on just it's just like a baby. I'm at the beginner. So with with patient and patient and patient, I, we need to continue uh, to learn from our expert. We are very lucky because surround us, we have Mr. Dave Backwell. I hope uh, he is here tonight with us um, because Dave is one is um, it's a very well-known person. If you ask any birders, all, all, all of them will know Mr. Dave. Yeah? So uh, every time we want to check or we want to learn something new, we've, we always ask Dave and we always some, uh, go, go to the field with Dave. So he is very um, uh, helpful in terms of um, um, help us in identification. Okay, Mr. Kandakuma from MNS Penang also uh, very supportive. Every event that we conduct, he will come and give support and take part uh, in, in each of our conference. And the last one is one Haji Muhammad Al Zahri. Uh, he is a very uh, well known person among bird photographers. Uh, we believe that. Uh, when we capture birds uh, photograph, we, we want to produce a uh, good quality one. So when we produce a good quality picture, we can attract more people to love birds, to get aware about the importance of uh, shore birds. Yeah? Okay, so next. Next, please. Okay. So throughout um, our observation in, uh, in the past uh, four years, three years, um, we, we managed to uh, observe about 46 species of migratory shorebirds. And on your screen right now uh, are the migratory, migratory shorebirds in the partially breeding plumage or full breeding plumage. Yeah? So they are on their migration to the north what no, and their north um, breeding site. So um, this is uh, the 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 beautiful of of shorebirds when when you can see them in different breeding uh, in different plumage during their arrive uh, during their arrival and also during their their departure. Okay. Next slide. Okay. These are the threatened species of shorebirds at Teluk Aitawa. Okay, the first one is uh, Spoonbill Sandpiper. This was uh, recorded in 2013 by Mr. Dave um, um, in Teluk Aitawa. And the rest also, and uh, I, I never seen this species. I hope I can see uh, this species uh, one day. Yeah, so the next one is the Great North. Uh, Far Eastern Kaliu, all of these species are the threatened bird species. For the uh, spoonbill sandpiper, um, the scientists um, estimate, estimate the number of the um, uh, matured adults are about um, 200 in, in number, 200 individuals. So they are very um, few in, in this world. Yeah? 
Okay, next. Okay, what we have done and what is our current progress? So since we are near to um, USM, okay, USM is um, um, uh, because I'm I I was born from USM. Uh, I'm um, uh, graduated from US uh, USM. So I very I I have a close um, um, contact with lecturers. And also the students. So uh, most of our um, project run by the uh, final year uh, uh, students, uh, final year students from uh, School of Biological Sciences in USM. So uh, what we have done, we um, we do the research monitor uh, monitoring and also behavioral study on the shorebirds. Um, and the last one, uh, we also conduct an um, uh, outreach program. Okay. Next. Okay. This is the first uh, engagement um, outreach program um, with uh, local people in TAP. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, this uh, event I call it my singgah sat tengok burung. Okay. My singgah sat tengok burung. Sebab orang utara kan, they, 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 when we create something like lo, they are logat, they, 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 it, it make it interesting to, to come. So, um, uh, it is about uh, 50 to 70 participants uh, during that time. So, um, um, we are glad that we can show to them the shorebirds uh, species just behind their 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 house okay uh, uh, what we do is uh, we bring telescope we bring binoculars and we uh, teach them how to identify shorebirds and before that we also uh, explain to them what, what what is the importance of the mangrove and and um, many more so next slide Okay, this is the pictures. Can you see Machi and Pachi and the local people uh, can see the birds through binoculars. They are very excited. They are they 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 all they, they asking me to 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 they ask me to do this again because they are very enjoy to see the the birds. Some of them this is the first time they they see the shorebirds behind their their area. Yeah. Okay. Next. Okay, other than that, uh, when I go to field, um, uh, instead of uh, give uh, lectures, yeah, simple lectures, uh, uh, sim simple lectures um, uh, to the, to the uh, um, um, locals, um, when, when I go to the field, bring the telescope, bring the binoculars, when we meet Pachi and Machi uh, on the roadside, I always show to them this is the bird that we uh, that that we concern and the importance of the mangrove and so on. So from there we also create awareness. Yeah. Okay, this is the second event where we collaborate with uh, MNS Penang, uh, the Habitat Foundation, and also the um, uh, MBSP. Yeah, MBSP and Unit Nelayan uh, follow. Kuala Kedah, Kuala Muda, sorry, Kuala Muda uh, to uh, create an event which is a World Wetlands Day. Uh, okay, so this is a very uh, uh, enjoy moment where we can, yeah, uh, create awareness among them. So uh, during the COVID-19, there is, uh, and, the, and the, the new normal, we no more can go outside and create event. So what we do, uh, uh, same with other people, uh, we go online. So uh, for the on the nine May, on the past nine May, twenty twenty, we we celebrated World Micro, My, Migratory Bird Day virtually. We I call this program as on the trail of the shorebirds, where we um, post um, uh, uh, information on our Facebook and um, the participant will uh, quickly answer our online quiz and uh, they will uh, uh, they can uh, win 
uh, the uh, T-shirt, our exclusive T-shirt on World Migratory Shop, uh, on World Migratory Birds Day. Okay, we go to the future potential to Chalo Aitawa Kuala Muda. So this is in, in my mind. Okay, next slide. Huh. Okay, what I imagine for for Chalo Aitawa is I hope one day we can have this world class wetlands gallery. Okay, in the picture is uh, my friend, uh, Mr. Mu'in. Uh, both of us uh, have a chance uh, to go to, the Jap uh, to Japan for exchange program. Uh, we, we had a chance to uh, visit um, an educational gallery in Lake Biwa, uh, uh, Japan. So I, I want to show you what inside this gallery. Next slide. Okay, here we go. So there are many scopes inside this gallery. So what if we can, what what um, if we can have these kinds of gallery to uh, um, uh, in in the Teluk Aitawa because it will create um, more um, um, job for for the local people and also will uh, increase the tourism at, uh, activity in a sustainable way yeah so inside this gallery we have the photos of course we have a lots of amazing photos of shorebirds and other birds also so we can put inside this gallery and we can welcome people all around the world to come to this area and to appreciate the nature at the same time we can generate income to, to this um, um to this uh, uh activity okay next okay uh, I will uh, uh, share with you some spectacular findings uh, throughout our um, observation in Teluk Aitawa. The first one is a great crested tern. Okay, this um, species was observed on 30 January 2018. This is the first reciting after seven years. If you look carefully at the lake, there there is a, a tag, right? Okay, so this bird was banded in Jishan Island, Penghu, Taiwan. So it come here long way from Taiwan to um, uh, migrate um, and um, uh, uh, to find foods and shelter yeah, during the migratory season. The next one. Okay, this is a great note. We are, this is the endangered uh, species. Okay, so um, uh, the, um, based on uh, the date of observation was 15 October 2018. The origin of this bird, if you look at the, uh, the leg at, uh, of the bird, there is a white, uh, black and yellow flag, right? So this bird was a origin from Kamchatka Peninsula, Russia, the Russian Far East. It's about 8... eight thousand kilometers from from here to Russia yeah this is a very amazing creatures visit Tele Aitawa same like common uh, red shank uh, originated from uh, China uh, we observed this species uh, on 2 May uh, 2019 okay next slide Okay, threats and challenges. Of course, uh, when um, when there is a mangrove, uh, human activities, uh, we cannot stop that. So uh, what we see uh, from 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 uh, our uh, observation, uh, there is an unwanted catch. Uh, for example, uh, many of the uh, fishermen there use the fish gear, fish net to catch. Um, uh, crabs, yeah, invertebrates like crabs. So sometimes this bird uh, was uh, stranded on the on the in the fish net. Okay. So the next track is um, aquaculture ponds. This will be touched by uh, our next speaker, yeah, Dr. Ahmad Zafi, uh, on the impact. Yeah. Okay. So special thanks to our team members and to um, uh, Mr. Muin, Mr. Dave, MNS Penang, Mr. School Salma, and Jidai uh, Jaringan Ecology and Iklim for inviting me uh, tonight. And also uh, to Persatuan Nelayan Kuala's, uh, Kawasan Scrum Pry and also Unit Nelayan Kuala Aitawa Kuala Muda. And don't forget 
to follow uh, our uh, FB page for more updates. Thank you. Okay, uh, shall I introduce uh, Dr. Ahmad now? And we have any questions, uh, shall we leave it later? Okay, uh, can you start, Dr. Ahmad? Okay, uh, thank you, Chu Ing. Uh, uh, thank you to all viewers, thank you to Jedi to have invited me tonight. Uh, so, Telo Aitawa, challenges and the way forward. So, mangrove and mudflats ecosystem has mis has been misunderstood, and some people have the mindset that this ecosystem is just a wasteland, uh, right for development uh, or being changed into other profitable. Yeah, I have semicolon here. Profit other other land use changes that they think that might have more profits. But okay, as you can see in the on the slide that I'm showing here, these are the ecosystem services uh, that people benefit from mangroves all over the world. And surely some of these benefits are being, uh, being, uh, being provided by the Teluk Aitawa mangrove. So by people not realizing the importance, the value of uh, such a great ecosystem it has resulted loss and degradation of this so this very special and valuable ecosystem uh, as, a, as an example uh, there are people the, the orang kampung in Teluk Aitawa that they don't even know that they have this great uh, migration of water birds coming to their area every year uh, and during peak seasons thousands of these birds uh, uh, flying over, stopping by uh, for for a few months before fly, flying flying down south, and these people have been living there for thirty years, forty years. That they, they don't know about those, but uh, yeah, un, until Dr. Munira came and uh, did her awareness program there. Okay, I'm not going uh, for the ecosystem services. I'm not going through all the the services, but then I'm just going to touch on a few. First, let's look at the fisheries resources that mangrove has been providing. Uh, we know that a lot of fishes, uh, invertebrates, uh, kerang, kupang and all, depends on the mangrove ecosystem. Uh, just imagine, without a mangrove ecosystem, where, where would we get uh, the shrimps and the cockles, the kerang for, for our Chakwitiao. Huh? People come to Penang for Chakwitiao. Uh, without mangrove, we wouldn't have the cockles and the, the shrimps. And, uh, and then uh, look at coastal protection. Just if you remember what happened in 2004, the big tsunami that came to Indonesia and Malaysia and also some of the parts of Asia. Just try to compare uh, what would happen. Oh, how, how was the impact between areas with mangrove uh, forests on the shoreline and areas without mangrove on the shoreline? Okay, so uh, next. Okay, so when you are talking about ecosystem protection, we can't just uh, be looking at one component and forgetting the other components, okay? Uh, and I'm sure did, to to have a successful project, to have a successful conservation program, we need to look at all the components. Okay, so now here uh, on this slide, I have uh, identified five main components that we all need to to look at. We all need to consider when we are talking about conserving and protecting the Teluk Aitawa uh, mangrove. Number one, yes, fisheries. That's where all the the local fishermen are uh, getting their get the fish to, to be sold. That's where the income is. So we need to make sure that they can have their continuous income. Uh, number two is development planning. State government, federal government would always have plans. And how do we make sure that those plans, the local plan, the, the structure plans, uh, do not do not uh, come and negatively impact uh, the Teluk Aitawa 
mangrove ecosystem or any other mangrove ecosystem that we have. And then the next point that we need to really consider is the local socioeconomic. How would uh, protecting a mangrove ecosystem benefits the locals? Uh, maybe how, how can they gain uh, income from protecting the, the, the mangrove ecosystem? Uh, just imagine, uh, uh, sorry, just look at uh, before. There's another uh, local NGO in Seberang Prai Selatan. They have, they have a group of fishermen who now uh, gets income by protecting mangrove. They get people, they get companies to come and plant mangroves in their area. And then we also have uh, wildlife. Uh, Munira mentioned about the, the water birds, but the water birds are not only the wildlife that can be found in mangrove ecosystem. Uh, yeah, we don't have the, the big mammals, we don't have the elephants and the tigers there, but we, don't, we do have the, the primates, the silver leaf monkey, the long tail macaques there. Uh, and they do need this, uh, this, this mangrove forest uh, as their habitat. And as mentioned, the next point as mentioned by Dr. Munira earlier uh, is about aquaculture. How do we, how do we respond to uh, demands for, uh, to convert uh, mangrove ecosystem, mangrove forest into aquaculture pond? Is there, any other options then that we can consider? Uh, is it, yeah, how, how can we go about it? Because there, there's always be demand. Uh, and not just in Penang, but also in other states in, in Peninsula Malaysia and also throughout Southeast Asia, where there are mangrove forests, there's always demand to convert it into agriculture farms. Okay, next. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to take the wildlife component uh, to look deeper into the wildlife component. What would happen to the wildlife that are using Teluk Aitawa as their habitat if the area is being cleared, if the area is being converted into any other use, either aquaculture, uh, in industrial, uh, or housing areas? Yeah, where would the animals go as being shown in the cartoon here? Okay, next. Okay, uh, I'm sure most of us have seen how uh, human wildlife conflict has been increasing in Peninsula Malaysia and also in yeah in the have been increasing in Malaysia. Uh, conflict with macaques, conflict with wild boars uh, that have been increasing for the past uh, 15 to 10 to 15 years. Yeah, I'm sure conflicts are already happening now uh, on the for in areas bordering forests, yeah. But just imagine how bad the conflict would be if the total, the if the total forest is being cleared. Where would these animals go? Uh, and macaques, yeah, like uh, the the news the news article that I'm showing there on the slide, uh, kera masuk dapur, yeah. You end up having more of, of such problem when when with with the mangrove forest now. The macaques can go and look for their own food in the forest. They can go and eat the crabs. They can go, go and eat any other animals that they can find in the, uh, in, uh, on, in the mud flat by the river and all. But then without the forest, where would they go? Into your house, into someone's house, into someone's kitchen. Okay, next. Okay. Uh, this figure is from 2018. As we can see, human long tail market conflict is actually the highest uh, incidence of conflict that has been reported to the wildlife department, followed by conflict with the, the wild boar. So, if uh, a forest patch is being cleared, then it will just make uh, conflict incidences increase. Uh, for for the animals that are that are using the area as their habitat, yeah. So here we have kera, babi hutan, and uh, also for the civets. Yeah, we don't have gajah there. Okay, next. So the way forward. So what can we do? 
uh, how can we go about with protecting Teluk Air Tawar? Okay. Uh, number one is research. So Dr. Munira uh, and also MNS. MNS has been in Teluk Air Tawar for the past 10 to 15 years monitoring the birds there. And now Munira is there conducting research on the water birds. Uh, but then there's also a need to look into the social aspect, so the so social research. So we need to get other researchers, uh, universities, NGOs, uh, to look into the fishermen livelihood. I'm, I know that MNS, the Malaysian Nature Society, has conducted uh, some studies on the fishermen there. But then, yeah, they can be a lot more research can be done so that people really understand the importance uh, of Teluk Aitawa and what can we get by protecting and ensuring that this uh, ecosystem being preserved. Okay, uh, number two is awareness programs for the local community and the public. Uh, there's a Malay saying, tak kenal maka tak cinta, right? So, uh, uh, as Munira has shown, uh, Makcik and Pakcik got excited when they get to see the, the birds through the binoculars, through the telescope. Yes, and all this one, they never know about, oh, they have these interesting birds, these critical endangered birds coming to, the, coming to their neighborhood. So we need to ensure that these people uh, get, uh, be proud yeah, of what they have. Uh, because throughout the, the, the West Coast, there are many other mangrove area, but why uh, that's the chosen place for these water birds? Because it's special. Yeah, there are some migratory birds that go to northern Selangor forest as well. But then comparing northern Selangor and also Teluk Aitawa, Teluk Aitawa gets more water birds coming there every year. So it is very special. So uh, the local people in Batuworth, People in, in Penang, people in Kedah, people all over Peninsula Malaysia should be proud of that. And we need to tell them that this is something that you can be proud of. It's We are playing a role just like being an, uh, a big RNR for the world, actually. Uh, RNR for the bird to come and to chill a bit before they're going further down south. Uh, and then we need to work with the authorities. Uh, uh, as I put on the question earlier, can, can we work with aquaculture? For me personally, I think uh, aqua, offshore aquaculture can be conducted. Uh, to have uh, the to have this the cages, the floating cages up uh, out in the sea, but that also need to be carefully managed so that it doesn't impact uh, the surrounding, doesn't doesn't pollute the the water bodies, doesn't pollute the sea. Uh, and then we can also get the the authorities to to pr to promote birding tourism. There are various types of ecotourism activities that can be conducted uh, in Teluk Aitawa. Uh, people can become guides uh, uh, for mangrove walk or mangrove uh, uh, introduction to mangrove birding, uh, water birds birding. Uh, all these activities can be conducted so that the the authorities would see that there are actually other benefits uh, that can help the local people uh, there are other options for them besides converting it into aquaculture or any other land use changes okay i think uh, that's it from me so i i would love to get people to ask questions and then we can discuss more what do you think how do you think we can help to aitawa uh, what can be done uh, 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 besides what Dr. Munira has already been doing there, it was a good job. That's why we at the Habitat Foundation decided to, to fund her project. And we hope that this project could really help Teluk Aitawa and then we get to conserve the area. Because we still have time. It's not, we still have time to make the right decision. To preserve what we still have, to preserve, to preserve the values that Teluk Aitawa has. Uh, and then by, by doing this, we're actually not just helping Teluk Aitawa, but then we're also helping the world because we're protecting one of the important flyways of the birds. Okay, thank you. That's all for me.